All right. <laughs> so, friends, <laughs> here we are. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me into your home. Um, this is a real, real special experience to be here. You know, it's always, I've, I've, it's one thing to see each other on the dance floor and I, I've, 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 it's going to Daybreakers now for the past little bit, past couple of years and it's been marvelous, but it's one thing to see you on the dance floor and now in your own home. Man. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. And I got to say, incredible interior design. Thank like, you. It, that was it's just, it's, oh, take it all. And my friend Connie. Yeah. All right. Shout out I mean, to my Connie. friend Connie was really the one who like put it like to, to paper mm. but like i envisioned the whole thing like i was like i want about the curtain oh it's yeah you know, it's it's glorious it's like it really shines through like what your personalities are what you present so thank you, you. Floors, yeah you and then the eli yeah. just was just I get like to really enjoy it yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's amazing yes yeah, thank god i have a very easygoing husband who's like just down for all of my creative yes man ways yeah well, he's not a yes yeah, man she has really good ideas <laughs> he's definitely not a yes man for but like when it comes to we have happen to have visual the same taste mm. yeah well i gotta say on the way here i was i was just like bouncing to uh open your eyes of course yeah, and, yeah. yeah. i was so happy after my first day break, i heard the song you guys how you usually end off your day breakers mm -hmm. with that song and mm. i was like i gotta find this went online and you guys and i went on spotify and i found it so i've been like just listening to it and it's also just right on point Good vibes, good energy. Ellie opens up by saying, "You have a choice. Yeah. You either wake up being miserable, or choose you can to be, be happy. Or you choose to be yeah. miserable. Yeah. Today, we choose to be happy." So I was going to ask you guys, how do you how are you feeling today? Oh, I feel really great. I feel very happy. I feel very connected. I feel very in love. I feel very just full. I feel my cup runneth over. Mm. Yeah, from that really. salmon I cooked earlier. Or uh, yeah, <laughs> Eli made me this beautiful gourmet salmon. But just yeah, we came back from a beautiful weekend, yes. um, long weekend. My birthday, my twin sister, and forty friends. Congrats! And, yeah, um, yeah, and I just feel so seen and loved and and like acknowledged. Just all the things, you know. And that's yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's that's beautiful, and and that's really important to you because I mean, Daybreaker, and we're gonna delve right. I mean, right into it. Let's go for it. belonging. Your book, um, belong, yeah, belong is all about community, right? That's right. Why is community? Why is community so important to you? I mean, for me, for I mean, I'll, I'll speak for myself, and you speak afterwards but uh, for me you know belonging is the root sort of the root human experience so if we feel that exhale of ah, I belong I'm home I, I feel like I can be fully myself mm -hmm. I can be fully seen in all of my colors that actually ladders up to every societal opportunity but then also societal issue if you don't feel belonging mm -hmm. so when you feel lonely and isolated, you are driven to gun violence, or isolation, to anxiety, to depression, to to obesity epidemic. To I mean, being being alone is as harmful to your physical health as being being lonely is as harmful to your physical health as being an alcoholic, mm. and twice as harmful as obesity. Wow. So there's all these things that I you know as I've I've learned. And for me personally, you know, when I turned thirty. I looked myself in the mirror and I was like, oh, shoot, I don't belong. Like, I, I was like, I spent my 20s sleepwalking, going to sports bars, watching sports and like drinking beer and like sure. doing all things I didn't want to do because I thought that's what I was supposed to do. And I just wasn't happy. And I just look, woke up one day on my 30th birthday and I was like, this, my light is dim and I, I there's got to be another way to live life exactly, you know, in the authenticity of who I am. And um, and find those friends who will make me feel and give me those wings to really help me fly. And so I spent multiple years really focusing just on community. And and you know, ten years later at forty, mm. forty one. Wow. Um, awesome. You know, Congrats. thank you. It's just like a complete one eighty from I don't belong. I feel lonely. You I mean, other than my twin sister. Yeah. To now just this thriving beautiful community because I focused on it that became not like a nice to have but a must have it became mm -hmm. top of priority mm -hmm. not if I have time correct yeah. and um, it's 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 given wings for daybreaker you know my friends are for the first daybreaker it's given wings for things mentor company they 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 supported the first kickstarter campaign so it's just like your community is there for you for every step of your success and your failure yeah mm. tremendous how are you baby yeah well I really feel like when, when it comes to belonging, it's you're choosing your people. And what I th one thing I learned from you is you are the five closest friends you keep. And so if I look back through time and think about the five closest friends I've always had, you know, it's really reflected who I am throughout the, the evolution of who I've become. And I mean, right now I feel like I'm the best I've ever been because of the people that I surround myself with. And, <laughs> uh, it's, 
and I second everything else you say. You know, I really actually look up to her as an expert in in this, and she's really shaped my opinion around around belonging. And yeah. Wow. I mean, that really resonates with me deeply because I just I, was, I just turned thirty myself a few mm. weeks ago, and oh wow, that's right. Yeah, and so it's 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 so it. I've also become I've been trying I've been having growing a community on social media and but that's that's one life and right. now I'm like realizing wait a second am I in line like real yeah. though yeah. touching yeah, people yeah, here yeah. In, exactly. in the actuality right. and I realized that a lot of my life hasn't been lined up with perhaps the persona on online and so with 30 coming about I've gotten a lot more comfortable into who I am, mm. more confidence. I've always been a confident type of person. I've always shown that side to me, but there's always been times in my life where a lot of it has been a bit of a mask or right. just trying to be a certain totally. way because of others and all mm. that kind of looking good and trying to please. And there has been a shift in, in 30, not to you know, feed into like the societal like ways of being, but like, yeah, it's been great. Okay, this is who I am. I'm getting comfortable with it. I'm confident about who I am. And now let me start building a community and just like allowing myself to blossom, allow people to see me for who I am and and so on and so forth. So like that really, but there's one thing to, you know, want a community, but how does one go about yep. building a community? So yeah, I mean, I spent two years writing this book called Belong mm. um, that gives you a step-by-step -step guide for how to build your dream community because in one hour-long conversation that we're going to have today, sure. I can only give you so many kind of tidbits and over the you know, last seven years, I've sat with uh. hundreds of people sharing these details. Um, so I just, I really took the time to put all of our Daybreaker Trade secrets in this book. Um, but but just to share kind of like um, a few really important nuggets to all of you watching. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's so critical first to decide what kind of community that speaks to you first. So it's like, you know, if you're doing a wine tasting community because you think wine is chic and hot, but you, but you have a hangover in terms of wine, like it's right. probably not the right sort of community to start, right? Mm -hmm. So first taking the time to go get gooey, and I call it your inward journey, going in before you go out. So take the time to like sit down and, and ask yourself, what are the qualities I'm looking for in a friend? Like I actually wrote this down on my 30th birthday. Like what are the qualities I'm looking for a friend? This, this list became the blueprint for what is shaped who I am today. So oh. what qualities I'm looking for in a friend? Call them one. Call them two. What are the qualities I don't want in a friend? I don't want people who cancel. I want people who say they're going to show up, they're not going to show up. I want people who are talkers, mm -hmm. shoulder shruggers, like all those things, right? right? Like I want people who lean in. I want friends who are, you know, who say F yes to yeah, life. I want friends life, who yeah. are talking about ideas on each other. Like I want friends who work out. I want friends who go traveling. Like, you know, all I wrote down. Wow. And then column three, perhaps the most important column is what are the qualities that I need to embody in order to attract the friends that I want. So I need to be less judgmental. I need to be less workaholic. I need to let triple book less, right? So mm -hmm. just like, I was, anyway. Not double, but triple. <laughs> I was a triple Yeah, booker, wow. Not even alive. So you were the person, right? You were, you were the person who you didn't want to hang out with, and so to speak. No, honestly. Like, I, yeah. I mean, like, because I'd be like, wow, like she said she's hanging out with me, but then she's canceling because she had two other plans that she didn't, for, I mean, out of good intention, Absolutely. always. Sure, but, sure, yeah. But developing boundaries and developing, you know, the ability to say no, which I'm, I'm always telling Eli, like, it's gotta be better at saying no because he's he's such a we're both such people pleasers. Yeah. Um. And and just like having that kind of strength to say, hey, I can't today. I've already had plans, but let's schedule next week. Like, what's the big deal? Yes. Like, why is Trump saying that? You know. That's interesting. Also, on that point, I yeah. also found myself saying yes to a lot of things which I didn't even want. Yeah, to that's do. right. So you knowing more about what I yes. really want, it's like it's yes. easier to say no because like, right. do I really want to do this? Yeah. Yeah. So so that's the second exercise to do. So 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 the three column list is the first is the first thing to do. Second thing is. Is writing your via chart is what I call it. So your values in one circle, mm. your interests in one circle, and your abilities in another circle. So what are things that you value? What do you like from us? It's family, it's community, it's travel, it's adventure, it's dancing, it's yeah. you know, da, 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 like ideas, right? So it's values. Like what are my interests? Like I'm interested in music festivals, like Burning Man. I'm interested in you know, you know, working out every morning. I'm interested in in connection and community. I'm interested in, in eating and, and cooking food, like, mm. right? So like. What are your interests? In? They're they're slightly similar to your values, but they're different in the sense that they're tangible things that you can do, right? Mm, yes. And the third column is what are your abilities? Like, what are you actually good at? What mm. are things that give you life? Like, and I say abilities, but through the lens of what can you bring to your community? Are you good at taking out the trash? Are you good at cooking? Are you good at organizing? Are you good at hosting? Yeah. What are the things that you're good at, right? And mm. so as it relates to what you can bring to your community, and that just that beginning of a blueprint right and inside the center of that you'll begin seeing the your ultimate why and for for me that why is belonging there you, go. you know so was there a point in your life that you did not feel like you belonged 
a place that you felt lonely and yeah, it was yeah. like I was thirty years old and um, it was hell of a thirty like growing growing up. Yeah, I mean, was it a pinnacle I, time? I, you know, honestly, like when you're identical twin, I yeah. always had my security blanket. Sure. The one time, actually, I will say, when Mickey and I studied abroad, I studied in Paris, studied in, in uh, London, and we got a scholarship. Like mm. my immigrant parents, we had to like do a presentation for why you know we wow. wanted to go and all that. Yeah. But we ended up going, and it was my first time that I didn't have my security blanket, my twin sister with me, so I. I'll never forget, like, listening to my Walkman and, like, Indigo Girls on repeat and just walking the streets of Paris, like, crying Frightened. tears of loneliness. Oh, and, man. like, it was really weird. Right. Um, so, yeah, I definitely knew that feeling. And then turning 30 was also the realization that I wasn't, like, lonely. I had friends, but I was lonely in, in those friendships. Absolutely. You know? Totally. I mean, I hear many times how people could be married or be in a partnership and still they could feel very much alone. Right. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I totally agree with that. How about you, baby? I feel like you've... I feel like you've never felt alone. I don't know. Have you? I think I've never really felt lonely, but there's been times that I've gone to like, so I was, I came from the Midwest in Madison, Wisconsin. I would go to East coast summer camps. Um, and there was times that I would feel alone out there, you know, as I didn't feel like I really fit into, uh, you know, with the people that were there at the time. And, you know, that led to like fights and things like that, which I wasn't really happy about, but, mm. uh, for the most part, I've always felt felt safe and felt like I belonged. Nice. Yeah. God, aren't you lucky? Yeah. <laughs> right. You don't understand yeah. us. I know. <laughs> lonely birds here. I know. They're so well adjusted. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. It's, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful combination here. Yeah. So bring me back to, you know, I know you, you're, wow, incredible. I mean, accomplishments are through the roof when it comes to things like you just mentioned. And you just mentioned that things you just sold. Uh, yes. which is a beautiful and things for those who do not know thinks is a um it's an underwear that plays it's two in one pretty much it's underwear and it's a tampon for those uh for, <laughs> for period of time so it's i think it's genius it's great thank you and uh congratulations on you selling the um the company but i also love you were just sharing with me before the podcast started how what you did with that with that celebration you know some people may i mean you take it away well um, yeah i mean um <laughs> yeah i'm happy to share it eli do you want to share well I mean, Rada is an extremely generous person. Yeah. And as you can tell, what's most important to her is her community and her mm. friends. And, uh, it, you know, it wasn't always easy on, on the things, things road. And, you, you know, you need a lot of support over those years to, to get you to, to get you to a point. sale like that. Sure. Uh, and she wanted to show her, uh, show how much she cared about her friends that were there to support her throughout that ride. And so, um, in this past year it sold. So for her birthday, both her and her sister pitched in to do an all expense, like five star experience to Columbia Amazing. for 42 friends. <laughs> and, That's great. Uh, every, the, the friends, wow, friends didn't it. have to take out a single penny. Uh, wow. They didn't have to think about it. And it was, it was incredible. I mean, it's so rare that you have an opportunity to do that for your friends and for that to be the first big thing, you know, that she did mm. with the money. Well, um, I, you know, I, I, we, it's like, it takes a village, right. Sure. And it's like, um, these friends and, and our community are the ones who give us wings. Like had these friends not shown up to the first daybreaker or had mm. they not bought the first pair of underwear of, of thanks on Kickstarter, which where we launched thanks, you know, wow. um, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be where we are. And, and so many of our friends, like one of them came up with a tagline for things. Another one was there when all crazy stuff went down, you know, and, um, and there's just, there's just so many moments where your friends are so hard for you, where you're mm -hmm. able to like cry in their arms. And it really, you know, if you're trying to do the entrepreneurial thing alone, you're in for a really painful road oh, yeah. and to really invest, even those moments where you're like in the trenches of building your business to like put your laptop down and to have the willpower to say, no, Mayor, I'm like building this new thing, but I'm going to go and see my friend who, you know, who fills me up with energy and we're going to have dinner together, even if I have a million things I have to do and invest my time in like cultivating five, six, ten friendships that give me wings. Because in those conversations, A, you're filled back up again. Yes. You're given new ideas, new perspectives. You feel like an exhale, a kind of like a breath away from the work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And there's just so much that goes into you know, all that, that it takes that, you know, this to build, to build anything. And oh. so, um, so for me, I, I mean, like, you know, today millennials, though, I'm like slightly on the cusp, um, <laughs> you know, millennials, um, we value, you know, they, we, I mean, as a community, we value, 
um, experiences over over possessions, right? Yeah, and tremendous. so, 100%. and so the idea of like buying a Rolex, like, is so many of my friends like back in the day who are now in their fifties, they'd be like, you know, I sold my buy myself a Rolex watch, or I bought myself a car, or whatever. Yeah. Um, that no, that's no longer like exciting. Like the, the coolest thing is to be able to have even forty friends that would say yes to coming on, but who'd show up for you. Yes. And even if, yeah, okay, so, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a supported trip, you know, it's still the fact that they're taking time out of their busy days to show up for you. They're there to celebrate together with you. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, for me it's very much an equal energy exchange, you know. So Tremendous yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. We just had a friend one of my friends just was turned thirty and he uh helped really subsidize a lot of a big trip we went to Tulum together for, to celebrate. And that was like, it was really awesome. Like it was, and, but it, it, he really, it was, it was, he chose, you know, a certain amount of people and guys who were just there supporting and throughout the time. And it was a really beautiful bonding experience. Less oh, of, so you got the same thing happened to you. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it, it was a beautiful thing. Yeah. I was on the receiving end. I was a okay. friend who showed up, you know? That's so, awesome. Yeah. But it was great. It was awesome. But yeah. that means you're a wonderful friend that he, that he cherished you enough to want to, Yes. invite you down 100 you know? and i cherish him tremendously in my life and there's so much i lean on him for and and, and he's always he's been my rock what's his name him. izzy, izzy. Shout out, yeah izzy fish izzy. Yeah. 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 Cool. What's up? that's right yeah. happy 30th buddy <laughs> um and it, it is it's, it's tremendous to see about like you know who's showing up in your life who's yeah. to let go i relate wholeheartedly with the like workaholic aspect of like there's a billion things to do but closing a yeah. laptop and then meeting yeah. somebody yes like, like, how is really it takes me? willpower it takes so much willpower yeah. so much to realize that yes this is also healthy and this is also it's, important and it's actually n like like critical and necessary yeah. and as a society we're so focused today on achieving and hitting that public company ipo yeah, right. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. everyone is like you know everyone is so goal-oriented we've been trained even just as a culture and society to be tested like you know we we are we come through the system of testing mm. right sat yeah. test scores like all of that that we forget that actually like our greatest superpower as a human species is collaboration. Like what, you know, why we're on top of the world, yeah. you know, and not bears who are stronger than us or cheetahs are faster than us is because we've learned how to collaborate. Building buildings requires hundreds of different minds. Someone who's focused on physics, someone who's focused on building materials, light, you know, all of that, right. That mm. goes into it. So, yeah. you know, we're the, we're the, we're the top of the food chain because we're the best collaborators. And yet we forget that, today in our quest for this like rugged individualistic sort of prize. And that's where we need to kind of just like stop, stop talking about, you know, stop talking about that. And it's a daily practice for all of us, you know, talking about building yeah. 2013, bunch of people getting 185, 60, 160 people get together, 180, yeah. 180 and they get together and they day break. Yeah, <laughs> daybreak Earth. That's what we met on the dance floor too at Daybreak. Met on, so I want to, I really want to touch on this, uh, on, on the whole Daybreaker Genesis, how it began and, how you guys met on the dance floor? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, tell me. So, well, I mean, so, so I'll share. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, Eli, Eli came in the picture eight months into it, but Daybreak really started as a, as a, um, as a social experiment. You know, it was just like, could we create something that brought people together? Well, let me, let me take a step, step back. So, I went to Burning Man and it was the first time I'd ever kind of, gone out dancing by myself late night four o'clock in the morning yeah. my, my four friends i went to the first year were sleeping so i'm by myself and Robocop. late night yeah robot heart robot heart yeah 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 sure yeah. Sure. Yeah. for those who uh, don't know um yeah, yeah, yeah. burning man is a uh, is a week seven week day festival out in the nevada desert black rock city becomes over that period of time the third largest city in nevada just a a bunch of beautiful humans coming from around the world coming together to build this amazing city of love and connection and music art, festivals music, yeah. art yeah all, yeah all the good and things totally all co-created so there's no yes. kind of event organizer except the ones who are putting the container together right and then everyone creates the programming just as a collective which is super cool right. those are like headliners per yeah se, exactly right? no it's, it's so special yeah, um, so you went out and so went out there and i just like was like dancing you know for the first time by myself without substances like totally sober sun was coming up and i just never i remember just like feeling this like deep unlocking and this deep sense of freedom that I'd, I'd honestly like never felt in my adult life that I'd only ever felt when I was riding my bicycle as a little kid like you yeah. know and I just remember having this like moment of just like deep euphoria and deep connection to myself mm -hmm. and the universe just all of it around me and that was that aha moment that wait a minute like dance is truly the most powerful 
modality that exists on the planet. And as I did research over the, over the last you know seven years, I've come to learn that also dance is in fact the most healing modality. That's the most, the most connected modality. That's, that's how we met on the dance floor. It's one that you fall in love with. It, it, feel, it makes you feel most free if you let yourself. But mm -hmm. because as a society, we've started saying, I'm not a dancer. I don't do this. I need only a party or if I have to be I have to bleep that out. Yeah, yeah. Um, Kids. you know, and you know, it's just like there's so many kind of limitations that we place on ourselves around what dance means to us. And, you know, just if there's music, you know, if our hearts are beating, like that's the first dance, that's the first beat, you know. Mm -hmm. And and so to recognize that we are all dancers is so, so important. And so that moment was when I was like, okay, like how can we bring this experience to, to cities where we're the most isolated and lonely? This is big cities in, in America. So let's just start as a social experiment in New York where I was 35, single, 34, single, running my first start. was start, started with my sister. I had a couple other start. I had another startup as well. Thanks. Thanks. Um, Live it up. And no, it was super sprouts, a kid show. That was, so that was my, it's hard to keep up with this one. You're always so anyway, many ideas. Okay, yeah, yeah, keep going, keep going. Um, so it's just like the hamster wheel of entrepreneurship sure. and it was like nowhere to go to let my hair down and... Um, the nightlife experience is mostly masculine, 70% mas male who go to nightclubs, very, very predatory, very kind of like dark in energy, um, very sexual energy. Yes, it's not like yeah. this spring energy. So it's like, okay, how do we create something that's, and of course, nightlife is mostly male dominated in terms of the producers as well of mm -hmm. nightlife. So it was just like an opportunity to really experiment in kind of circadian rhythms. Like when are we actually most energized? The morning, yeah. right? The mornings when we're as humans meant to be the most alive, optimistic, joyful, ready to connect, all of that imaginative. Um, so connecting um, to the morning, removing all the negatives of nightlife. So replacing the bouncer with a hugging committee, yeah. replacing alcohol with green juice, coffee and tea, you know, adding performative elements to the... DJs and like really bringing something totally new to a time of day you'd be usually sleeping or in your headphones at a gym, right? Right. Um, right. So so it was really that, and it was kind of an experiment. So invited those friends, friends, core who, friends come yeah, to that and 180 showed up. Wow. Um, and 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 because we took the time to act, this is actually very important as you're developing all of your things as well. We took the time to really think about our core values. So our, what are our five core values? Even before the very first one, like we'd already took the time to think about what is our logo? What is our aesthetic? What is the color palette? What is the, what is the feel and look? Because community builders, community, what I call community architects, mm -hmm. if you really think about all the, the, the design thing that goes into building a community, it's, it's, it's more architecture. Building feels very 1.0, architecture is 2.0, right? Yeah. Um, but all that goes into it, um, you know, it, you just taking the time to think about who are the first people you invite to your first event is so mission critical in building out the energy for the future of that community. Because if you take the time to, to actually sit down, which is what we, we put an Excel spreadsheet together and wrote down every name and and debated who would be like joyful enough, positive, optimistic enough, be that fuck yeah friend yeah, and right. FYF, yes, a yes. term I put I in my that. book, F you F know, okay. um, <laughs> who's going to be down to say, F yeah, I'm going to go to this weird new thing in the morning. Yeah. You know, all the things that, that, um, because that, because by that, it's like the ripple effect happens, right? Because they go it. back, they go, they yeah. talk, so if you, if you it just attracts like, that type of right. person. That's right. If you just put on Facebook and you're just like, anybody, everybody, come to my party. The energy's you, weird. You got it. Yeah. The energy's weird. It's all over the place. So you have to be a curator of community. Like, that is my superpower. Is actually, like, and, and that's what I think that I'm, I'm the best at, is reading the energetic mix of, mm -hmm. of a room or of a community or to know that you and you would go really well together. Let's bring them together. You and you, okay, you have a relaxed energy. You have a chill energy. You have a joyful energy. All of it would go well together, but there, mm -hmm. there's no negative Nelly here. Let's put, let's so relax goes well with joyful, positive right. energy because they complement each other, right? So it's really like orchestrating, architecting all the energy is in a space mm -hmm. so that the most connected experience can, can come out and then everybody feels in the room and then they tell three of their friends, right. yo, I wanted to say that it made me feel so mushy gooey connected. I felt at home. Holy moly. I never feel that felt that like experience before. Let's go to the next one, Amazing. you know? So, so right. that's how it organically grew. And over the last seven years, we've spent zero dollars on marketing. It's all been word of mouth and Truly. it's just been, yes. Wow. And no investors, no word of mouth. It's all for the community, by the community. And Eli came I, in. Yeah, Eli. Yeah, I want to hear about. I want to. Yeah. I want to unpack that. I want to hear about the time you uh, came in for the yes. first one, and then yeah. he helped me really build. Eli, it. you were by the first daybreaker. Yeah, I, yeah. I wasn't at the first one. Oh yeah, okay. I was at for like the 
Aether. Yeah. And you heard it just word of mouth. A friend of yours were like, hey, this uh, party's happening. I was starting my, I started my own event company here in New York. Okay. And I came to Daybreaker on a research trip to see what else people were doing. Oh, right. And I instantly fell in love with it. I hadn't felt that organic happiness ever on the dance floor. And so I sprinted to Rada after the event was over. Um, actually, right before I sprinted to her at the end of every day breaker, everyone sits on the dance floor and she was speaking. Mm-hmm. And I actually fell in love with her. And she was talking. <laughs> was that? So the then moment? I had like two angles for what I was looking for. Uh-huh. Um, but the first angle was business like, and pleasure. Exactly. <laughs> first, I just wanted to get involved and asked her if I could apprentice or volunteer or anything and started as the founder's apprentice to Rod Agarwal. Wow. <laughs> so that, was my, that was my email signature. Oh my God. A few, days after, a few days after I got in line there, it was, no one was working with that. Uh, with them at the time so it was a good t- it was a good opportunity to to get Bro, in like um, really, yeah. right the eighth party what was just you who was who, what was that eighth event yeah eighth it event. was who just was, me and me and my partner my co-founder, co-founder at the time yeah uh we've since bought i've since you know he's no longer part of the project mm-hmm. and eli's my co-founder now because he really helped me take it from you know three cities we we're eight months in we were like in three cities already to wow. the 30 cities we are today and, tremendous. and he's very much you gotta like, update your 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 website i think <laughs> i saw 26 guys if you got 30 that's amazing oh yeah wow. we're 28 Moving, but we had 30 in the huge. next yeah, couple months absolutely yeah i saw I 30 up, in yeah. the next two months yeah, yeah. i love it i love it yeah yeah i saw there's a bunch of we're very close to 2500 uh for Tel Aviv. So. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very, we got excited. it. We unlocked Tel Aviv. You unlocked Tel Aviv? Yeah, wow. Yeah. I literally just looked like me yeah, last night. So fantastic. That's going to be one of the nice cities. Yeah. Wow. Oh my yeah. gosh. That's amazing. Well, let's say, okay, we're jumping ahead. I'm yeah. excited. I love Sorry. you guys. So you, wow, you, you fall in love. You see Rada. I, I fell in love. I got to her and I started with her. And so I was working on a finance job at the time and it was wonderful for what it was, but it wasn't filling me up creatively. Mm-hmm. So I was putting all my hours after that into Daybreaker with her. And uh, it also meant I got some time alone with her. And so anytime I would have that time, I would also uh, use the opportunity to like bring gifts that were thoughtful and made her continue <laughs> to think of me and things like that. And well played, so, man, well played. <laughs> after enough of those, uh, I got invited on our first business trip and we got to go to Atlanta together to produce Daybreaker actually at BBYO oh, uh, conference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no way. Yeah, I just got, I just, yeah, I'm part of the tribe, baby. Yeah. Uh, and Beautiful. so we went down to Atlanta, we did that, but you know, where Daybreaker was so scrappy at the time, there's only one hotel room mm-hmm. and it was for Rada and her twin sister, Mickey, who were speaking. And so I was, sh- I had to share a bed. With <laughs> okay. Anyways, that, are we getting past HR? I think we're getting, we're getting past. Uh, well, now, now they're just... now they're curious. But <laughs> there's always you have to leave with one anymore. Little yeah. cliffhanger. Yeah. That's so, but that was that, that trip really really brought you guys together and sort of let's, opened let's up. Let's say that that's the trip that brought us together. And uh, wonderful. And, 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 Southwest, and, and then South. Yeah, that's when things really started. But uh, you know that was where we we've been able to work as we've been able to spend pretty much every minute together. Uh, which, which is uh, fascinating because yeah. you know, there's all this like talk and there's all this the belief system that working together with your loved one, family, uh, a spouse or partner can be very detrimental to it to mm-hmm. a ship. Yet you guys blossom, you guys grow, yeah. you guys are each other's sunbursts. As I heard yeah. once or twice, <laughs> how do you make that work? How is that? Uh, you know, we because in the in Daybreaker, it's just such a creative company. Uh, there's so much room to design and think together and the types of problem solving that we're doing is, is ultimately it's it's all coming back to creating more human connection, belonging, joy, play in the world. And it's such there's such wonderful concepts to to mind meld over. Mm. And so, you know, obviously there's times that we butt heads on certain things, but you know, for the most part it's it's so easy to come back to the the, the reason that we're doing this. And I find that if there ever is a disagreement, it doesn't last long. And Yeah, and obviously like, they're few and far between. Yeah. I mean like yeah. we yeah, I think that what's so exciting and new for me to work with a, a partner in this capacity is that, yeah, our, our, we have we have literally this, our VIA chart is the same. You know, mm. we have the same values, the same interests, the same, actually different abilities. Like, I think that's also where it works really well. He's so good. I mean, he's just so good at seeing everyone's perspective and just being such a wonderful team leader. He's like probably the best producer I've ever known. Um, Just because producers in general, it can be very stressed in, you know, production, live events. There's, it's a very stressful environment. There's so many moving pieces, so much going wrong, so many kind of fires put out and, and people can get very stressed in that environment. It's like, Oh my God, like the DJ hasn't shown up yet or the equipment is broken with five minutes to go. Like anyone else would be panicking. Yeah. And stress, and he just is always so calm and cool and collected, and such a joy to be around. And um, yeah, we just have different. It's not that you know, I I I'm I, I like to set the vision 
for what is the future of the business? Like, how do we grow the community in different ways? How do we fan out all of our opportunity to, to scale our service? Mm-hmm. So how do we continue kind of thinking in different areas of the world to bring more community and belonging and connection. Oh, absolutely. So while I'm sort of setting the vision for future products and services that we can offer, he's really there to um, to be building. To make it happen. To, yeah, just yeah. to be bringing the rest of it to life. Which so is so funny because here we are, we're like sitting here and like well, yeah. if you go online right now, we don't know like there's going to be a bunch of day, day breakers coming up this Sunday. There's a bunch of around yeah. the world. Yet here you are taking the time out of your like busy schedule to chill. You guys seem very relaxed. And yet <laughs> at the same time, there's like all this stuff. <laughs> We have an Oprah event on Friday. Uh, on, on We're Friday. doing the Barclays Friday. Center on Saturday. Barclays Center on Saturday. Um, We're flying to London on. Oh, we have we Sunday. We have day break on Sunday. Sunday, Sunday to people. For- which I wanted, I wanted to bring that up, which segues into my next question, yeah. which is like how I know for myself when I'm, I just like hosted like a party, uh, we had 20 super soul parties around the, around the, awesome. the nation, right? For helping those who are experiencing homelessness and the community uh, to so come beautiful. together to see eye to eye human connection. But I'll be honest with you, when I, in the party, I, I was having very, a lot of trouble staying present right? because I'm there, I'm meeting people, I'm trying to interact, but at the same time, I know, okay, there's 19 other cities right. happening and this, and this and the screen didn't show up there and the food is coming late. So I found it very difficult and a little stressful to be right. honest <laughs> right. to to do this. How how does one ma- how do yeah. you manage? Um, That's just to, time to stay That's present. That's just time. Yeah. Seven years in okay. the first year, year and a half, it's like kind of like you know throwing shit on the wall and and sort of just doing wearing all the hats, you know. But I think time process. And then also letting go so often, mm. you know, as, as creators, like we hold on so tight and um, I, for us developing a playbook where it was that like we've trained all the cities on a, on a, on a very specific, you know, 75 page playbook wow. that we, that I wrote and Eli and I train everybody on and mm-hmm. actually we're, we're co-authoring. I mean, a lot of it we've rewritten together um, and um, yeah. And, and it's, it's really, um, it's so important to have um, those systems in place that you know everybody's on the same page and, and they've done that yeah. training around. Otherwise, yeah, you're going to be like, oh no, the experience in Charlotte's going to be different from the experience right. in New York. You know, so you want to have, but but they're all going to be ex- different. Like no one's going to care as much as you care or as much as we care. You know, right. I mean, like True. other than if you really, you know, if if and I have good. The good news is we've actually picked people in all of our cities where every single person feels so deeply connected to it yeah. some of them have more jobs and responsibilities outside of daybreaker mm-hmm. um so you know we're sort of um fighting with kind of how much time they have right. so um nice. so that's our biggest kind of competitor is just like time of day and how much time you can spend to put on something mm-hmm. um but well, we um, have, we've, uh, we've built a we've built a system, a that, system that i works. you know that we are able to rely on because all of the producers they come to New York for a multi-day training session. They actually sleep over at our house the whole time, so we get to really connect, connect with them as humans, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. not really just as like partners on the deep. project. And so uh, there's a ton of trust that's built in a short amount of time. And uh, you know, we feel so confident in the playbook that they're following that you know we are able to to rest. And then we have like an these- amazing team. Like our third partner, Tim Patch, is our COO, and he really just keeps all the wheels on. We have everything just organized all the numbers every detail every so receipt all the things like it's all documented all organized um so that's what it comes down to because i know for yeah, my it growing gets, now is like it's right you mentioned like having different experiences in all these random uh, random locations can be very uh yeah you want it to stay in the same brand you want to build a franchise that's right and it's really important to stay organized to have the playbook to really choose and and that's the right. right people. The right. Yep, that's right. And, and that just takes time and it takes we, patience. And... Yep, we have one writer who writes all of our copy for all of our cities. Yeah. Oh, I love. I think you're the only yeah. mailing list that I I haven't unsubscribed from. I mean, it's just it's so beautiful. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. And the yeah. chips and Thank the gifts yeah. and, yeah. and the words <laughs> yeah. and and how the, the, the language. I feel like Thank you're, you. right. it's just so down to the to the detail. Yeah, it's, just, I mean, it's fantastic. Is yeah, phenomenal. Sure. And we've yeah we've worked together and I've. I spend a lot of time setting the communication style mm-hmm. guide because yeah, we want to have our own language and voice. Like that's actually in my book as well as is part of how you build a community. I, I developed a method called the crawl method mm-hmm. and the crawl method for building your dream community. And the L in the crawl method is language uh-huh. and developing a language that is specific to your community. Like it makes you want to open the email. So it's like, what is a language that is specific to mayor's community for super soul, right? Yeah. Party and really developing that language language that is so unique to you um, is is actually very mission critical in developing a community that people will now 
kind of recognize and, sure. and, and know that that's, oh, that's Mare's writing. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Um, I must say, I did, you know, great artists steal. I, and I do want to give credit to a Daybreaker because one of the clothing ceremonies, like you mentioned, when you saw Rada up there speaking, I, I, perhaps it was around the card that you give out, yeah. like around the quotes, which... I love and it's also genius when it comes to branding because you know people take photos of it which I've done multiple times but at the end of Super Soul Party I, I did give out like, yes, a quote around kindness I love uh, that and, um, and we just panned it out Beautiful. we set a quote together and we all just took a moment to talk about it oh, that's awesome. and uh, I did mention you know how I, I was inspired from Daybreak oh, that's and so great so I hope you guys don't mind that I, are you, you know, kidding so, me it no was really, I, I love it I, I love it, I love it. Yeah. She talks all the way all the time about having entering exit rituals and that's you know, that's one for And us also that. having physical totems, like to be able to like everything today is so digital, you can't sink your teeth into anything, right? Yes. And so to be able to walk away with something physical that you can put in your pocket, you can look back on your desk, that's a quote that's not just like a flyer. And it's just like for us, honestly, it wasn't like it's 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 like smart, you know, marketing, you know, like we didn't even think for us it was just like how can we have people walk away with yet another thing that they're mm. like, man, like, yeah. you know, they gave us an amazing experience and now I get to have this poem that takes me on the rest of my day that reminds me of this wonderful moment I had together, yeah. right? And and so, you know, it's it's a physical opportunity to keep that feeling coming with you and something that's tactile that you can touch, smell, t- you know, feel oh, in yeah, your hand. It's grounded it's, in reality. We're in, yeah, the, in the digital age that that's we live right. in. It's, you get lost in that. Yeah, and then know. also we encourage our community members to give it to someone who they think on the street would need it yeah. or in their office or, or keep it on their desk as a good reminder for their own joy and happiness. So mm-hmm. it's like, you know, it's to keep that feeling going or to ripple it out to the world around you. And it's yeah. it's such an important part of of our ethos is, is um, you know, every we only do one event per month two in new york per month but one event per month across the country like Mm -hmm. across the world so once we commit to coming to your city that's another part of building community is actually committing to your city to being there for a certain number of events per year or a monthly cadence or a weekly cadence or a bi-month or quarterly cadence Mm -hmm. right so So once you you commit yeah once you commit you've said now you're like i didn't want to do it again but i did it because people were like yo is it happening again so you're like all right so annual cadence super bowl once a year, our mayor does this thing, yeah. right? For us, like we commit to our community that once a month, we're going to show up for a community. And even if some months it's like harder than others, or it's a winter month, no one gets out of bed, yeah. but we become what we call your monthly check-in. So every month, like this becomes group therapy, yes. right? Yeah. You show up to the dance floor with all your shit and you just like, let you just like, go. let it yeah. go. Yeah, you know, yeah, on the yeah. dance floor, you were fired, you broke up with someone, or you were having a joyful celebration, or you just, whatever it is, bring it to the dance floor yeah. and, and bring it from your mind to your body. And all of a sudden that monthly cadence of showing up to something becomes religion. It becomes the thing that like helps you get out of or get into your greatest moments of life. You know, mm. it's so important to give yourself those rituals. Oh, yeah, that, and, that and in a world where church is dead or like church is dying, yes. and rituals are dying. Mm-hmm. We're all seeking rituals like, and we still want rituals, right? That's why meditation yoga are on the rise. We still want rituals despite kind of like these strict rules that are given to you we still long for rituals that are more pagan in nature if you will Mm -hmm. so it's like trying to um create that for people through the lens of community through the lens of dance with dance is the most the the original Mm. ritual get that dose Um, yeah yeah exactly that's so critical yeah that's was there a moment in time when you were building because i had in mind we're all talking about daybreaker and for those who do not know and it's seven to nine in the morning yes right seven to nine in the morning so the whole concept sounds fantastic. You did it with a bunch of friends. Great. But how do, how do you motivate? How do you get people out? Because everybody says, oh, I'm not a morning person. And to pay for it, to show up and join this community, to come seven in the month. How do, you, how do you bring that across that it's like, hey, let me give this a shot? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, babe. Uh, well, I think that people see it as a, you know, some people see it as a bucket list opportunity. You know, for those who are looking to do something novel in their life, yeah, waking up actually at 6 a.m. to do an hour of yoga and to dance after that is something that most people have never done. They might want to say they did. Uh, and, you know, we also look, there's we everyone gets a free breakfast with this, too. Yeah. And so like, when you look at the value of like just what you're paying for, you know, it's it's less than a, a fitness class in New York and you're getting you a three hour experience with a free breakfast. So the value is one thing, but getting people over the hump to actually commit to it. Um, it you you really have to see it as something that you I belong you, to. You, you belong to. You know you have to really aspire and and want it. And actually, that's one of the best parts is that it's such a self-selecting community um, that only the people that are like, like 
people that right. are really motivated and aspirational are going to come right. you know so it has really been an amazing like douchebag filter yeah you know, yeah it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's true when you're on the dance floor you're there with the people like it's not it's it's none of that it's very freeing there's yeah. none of that like sexual trying to no, get into your it. pants energy right it's just like here i'm here to express myself I'm here to that's dance it. and just have a great time and totally. it's all yeah. ages like one of the things yes. that we talk oh, about the so baby, much what's his the name intergenerational uh, hero yeah, or yeah, like, hero that comes hero out. hero yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, hero is such a hero yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> we're seeing him grow up it's yeah so and my daughter who's yes one, of course of course oh my gosh of course i remember i was there every baby since she was born oh wow 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 rock star yeah and it's like and we have Jane Goodall's been a daybreaker, and we have people of all ages, yes, and like we've yes, had yes. four generations great yeah. grandparents to children. And, and, right. and you can tell, you know, when you go, you can leave telling your mom, grandma, your boss, you know, whatever it is, like it's something the whisper sharing that comes from it is also really helpful. And then, so you come to Daybreaker, you because you've, you've heard about it, you've, you've, yeah, you've heard something, right. yeah, you back to word of mouth, right? But you then trust you, the person, then told you experience you. it, and you keep coming back, yeah. and yeah. that's and you realize just from one time that there is a real community that's much more than just a dance party. Mm-hmm. Um, so we we never have had any issues with retention, um, but yeah, it's, it, there's always you know it, it's to get that it's it's funny because you you see like partners promoting the Daybreaker experience, for example, um, and you 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 look at the number from the number of people that come from the partner. And it's very few, you know, the Daybreaker audience is just such as uh, they have like the right amount of crazy. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So it's. it's, Yeah. You have to be a little crazy to dress up in costume. So so if the party starts at 6 a.m., you're getting ready like at 430, putting on your or maybe five, putting on your glitter, your costume or laying out that night before. But like it takes a special creative someone um, or like someone who aspires to be that or just a curious person to be like, okay you know, what is this thing about? Mm-hmm. And let me wake up this one time and see what it feels like. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you can, and then again, you decide for yourself if it feels good for you, you keep coming back. And if it doesn't, well, you know, it doesn't. Yeah. And, and it's super like, just completely whatever we, like our entire goal is we want to create a space for anyone of all ages, shapes, sizes to have a place to come to and feel like totally included and totally free to be exactly who they are, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What 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 is the future for for Daybreaker and for and for you guys as in, as a couple as individuals? Yeah, well, uh, Daybreaker. I mean, our goal is to keep growing, and and I always tell my team and I tell you know every entrepreneur that I talk to as well. You know, we just want quiet, evergreen growth. There's all this masculine investor energy that's like scale, hockey stick growth. Like everything's about like how do you go from two cities to 100 cities, and it's just like that's the fastest way to die. It's the fastest oh, way gosh. to lose <laughs> spirituality yeah. and spirit, and and just like the 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 beauty of a of a community is to like try to go from zero to 60 right away. It's like being very very careful and mindful. Growing, we went from one city to three cities to five cities to eight cities to ten cities. And this is over seven years. Seven years are in twenty-eight cities. That that averages out to about four cities a year. Yeah, you know. And so, mm. the the community so that you, lasts the longest. Sorry. No, yes, yeah, so usually that last longest are the ones that that are are patient. You know. Mm. And so, so I'm not. I'm not sort of. I don't get excited about being in a hundred cities tomorrow. I get excited about being a hundred cities. In, t- in like 10 years, mm-hmm. right? I get I get excited about launching new arms of the business, mm-hmm. of the community, of the opportunity that's been given to us to be able to like, for example, I say business in the sense that like we are figuring out, we're, we're building out right now our our fitness arm, our, our class arm of Daybreaker. So how can we, because there's so many cities from, you know, small cities in Mississippi, you know, and all just like cities in Michigan, just like all over the country who want Daybreaker to come but there needs to be a certain critical mass for us to be there. And so we want to figure out how we can launch in those cities to offer the Daybreaker experience to smaller groups of people in a way that is not is going to be sort of self um, self uh, kind of um, run, right? So we're working on 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 a on a on a on a sort of a, a training program for a classroom, a, a class sixty minute class version oh, wow. of it, right? And so not classroom, but a workout, like a workout, class. like a yeah. workout class, yeah, 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 dance, yeah, 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 dance, yeah, yeah, like you got it, yeah, yeah. exactly. Totally. So it's like so so. You know, that's an example of an yeah. arm of the business that I am really visioning right now with a, a bunch of team members uh, who are mm-hmm. phenomenal and doing yeah. it for 30 years and working with a science, greater good science center to develop the science and really 
back this pro, pro you know this project by science mm. you know so which most like, fitness classes don't think about you know yeah. like, for me it's like actually can we measure your brain chemistry and how happy you can be so like this type of thing like i'm just really interested in exploring and you know that's the future of daybreakers how can we continue moving through like what else you know what else would you say how um, would, how would you measure how, how does daybreaker how, how do you measure success when it comes to um, let's see. So, Cause... so our main KPIs are <laughs> um, tears of joy on the dance floor. Oh, uh, of joy. <laughs> Love um, I mean, smiles is an easy one. Smiles. Uh, <laughs> number of friends people have made on the dance floor. Cool. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I, the other, the other things are how long um, our, our team members stay on the, on, on the team for. Yeah. And I think what we, we want to do is we want to create a peak professional experience for all of our, um, for, for our team at HQ, but also our producers around the world. And, to have it feel like a family and you know we have these annual summits everyone gets together and it's it's beautiful um and we want to continue to grow that family uh so like imagine producers from all over the world imagine. descending wow. on new york and wow. then we take a giant so, bus to like a pri- secret location okay we went to vermont this past year and rented this massive house and just did three days of skill sharing and training and like just like re-upping on all the skills and then wow. partied around yeah and oh, i my gosh. just like had that everybody meeting each other and playing and connecting and it was just so magical mm-hmm. to be in that vortex of like all these humans who just want to make their cities and communities better and more vibrant yeah. and have that energy all kind of centrifuging together. It's just super special. I can imagine how important um, it is to, to allow, because you're, you're not seeing them always on, on a day-to-day basis, so allow them to exa- hey, we see you, that's we it. appreciate yeah, you. That's it. And like to feel part of the team. Yeah, and yeah. then the other success metric for us is, is our partners. And it's like we have <laughs> amazing national sponsors, partners, from food and beverage partners to apparel partners to um, to just, you know, just big giant partners like WW we're doing right now with Oprah's 2020 Vision Massive. Tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so Weight Watchers reimagine their name and call themselves WW, right? And so they, we've been working with them for the last year and a half and we're doing a nine stadium Oprah tour with them now. That's and amazing. they're really helping to move the conversation around wellness forward and have entrusted us, you know, to really be part of that process for them. And so, you know, for us to really scale a movement, to really grow the 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 voice of Daybreaker and the voice of of all of our partners around us, from you know from WW to Adidas to Sal McCartney, which we're working on as well, you know, to partner with all these communities and brands who also believe in the same things that we do, like that to me is actually um, how one plus one is eleven. Yeah. You know, I really believe that one plus one is eleven. Like so many. So, so many brands are just like, no, this is only, we're only going to do it this way because it's our way or the highway. Or lots of nonprofits are like, I don't want to share with other nonprofits because I'm so scared I'm not going to have enough funding for myself. Right. There's a lot of like, you know, people just like blocking and not talking to each other because there's fear. Like there's like a scarcity right. mindset. Right, taking, exactly. Yeah, I'm going like to take scarcity. from you or take from me. Yeah, yeah there's scarcity versus an abundance mindset. Yes. So it's like there is enough for everyone and yeah. there is enough for the whole world to be abundant if we held hands one plus one is 11 if we don't we're actually competing and it's actually a, a very stressful experience mm. so so for us like when we have partners who understand that one plus one is 11 who aren't just doing things their way but are actually like saying hey daybreaker you know how to build community let's hold hands with you and help us teach us how to build community on the inside and on the outside for us that's an fds like for us we're like you get it. You understand that it's more than just what your internal kind of goals and objectives and and revenue metrics are. It's it's also around how to actually build the movement around whatever it is that you're doing and mm-hmm. to partner with other like-minded partners to do that. So have you actually turned down like big many, quote unquote brands many, 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 that many. may seem sexy to work with, but like, hey, many, you many, get many, it? many. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Many who have bad ingredients. Mm-hmm. So we don't partner with food and beverage brands who have like garbage ingredients in their in their in their products. Mm-hmm. Even if we've been given, you know, offered oh. seven figure deals wow. um, to partner with them. We just say, look, you know, Principles. we we have well we have earned the trust of our community. And so you when you once you lose the trust of your community, it's over. True. So if we are the stewards of our community, you know, money doesn't talk. It's the community that talks, right? Mm-hmm. So um, so we were very, and because we have no investors, you know, we don't have investors bring down the next to tell us we have to, we have to get the scaled, you know, kind of, yeah, uh, right. uh, exit strategy. And so I was like, you know, we, we get to really be quiet and do exactly what we want when we want to do it. And it, it's really empowering that way. So I always tell entrepreneurs watching, you know, that, that don't take money just because, 
you think that's hot and that everyone's doing it, take money only because you need it. Otherwise, it's golden handcuffs. And also don't sign bad deals for yourself because um, the investors need you a lot more than you need them. They need to invest in things. That's their job. They need to find things to invest in. So sign the best deal for you. Don't find a shark who just wants to to um, rape and pillage. And so we've all made those mistakes. And um, it's so important that you stay true to your values and find values-based partners as well. Amazing. Yeah. Well, I, I, I jumped on the uh, on the daybreaker.com website and uh, I was looking through careers and I started looking for a bunch of pro, uh, you know, production coordinators in different cities. I'm here in New York City. That's obviously taken care of. But I was hoping to see like, an MC opening somewhere because <laughs> I don't know, Elliot kills it out here. I mean, I love, I mean, he's what a genius of a man. He's just so good. But I'm just letting you know out there. Okay. There's a space. Okay. Someone, okay. you know, someone get up there with the mic yeah. and make it happen. Oh. I'm just game. I'm like, Hi. you know, my services are, are, are uh, You open. know what? I mean, you know, I mean you know. we have we have Dave Ricker in Boston, DC, Philly, uh, all the time. So if our if if we need if we need a yeah, I'll come in and, and train and learn learn the ways. But uh, yeah, I do, so do, you speak, do, you speak, yeah. do you speak Hebrew? Do I? Oh, I speak. Oh, Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv. Um, that could be that, that could be, be a fine. thing. I speak a bit enough. Oh no. man, yes, yes, I do. There you go. Yes, <laughs> I do. Duolingo. The Duolingo. <laughs> Maybe I'll have you know, you just you know, I'll have like Abraham in my ear. Okay, Abraham, I know, I know, Abraham. Let's go. <laughs> Balagan. Um, if I wasn't the every DJ name, it would be DJ Balagan. You know, just, what's Balagan? Balagan means crazy. You know, yeah. Balagan. Balagan, Balagan, Balagan. Yeah, that would be my. But hey, something to think about. Okay, good to know. That's great. Yeah. So, um, just to share with the audience, uh, where can we find you and yeah. what to look forward to? Well, so I mean, first of all, my book for all the courageous community builders out there, community architects out there, um, my book is called Belong. Um, there's about 20 exercises in the book that really help you um, go from step zero to step launching my community and gives a sort of gives you really sort of all the blueprint for how to do that. Um, and then Daybreaker is daybreaker.com. Uh, find your city. Um, and yeah. And then um, what else? Love Rada. Oh, and then, yeah, on Instagram, I'm at love.rada. Um, Perfect. And you are at Eli, Eli Clark, Clark Davis. Davis. Eli Clark Davis. Yeah. Wow, amazing. 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 We didn't even talk about Live It Up, which is this we new. Did, yeah. yeah. We're not done yet. Let's okay, keep on it. going. All right, cool. Okay. Before you move into that, I actually wanted to hear quickly just a Genesis Daybreak. Who came up with Daybreak? It's such a great name. Yeah. How did that, who came yeah, up with that name? Yeah. Um, it was myself and my, I think it was, yeah, it was myself. Um, that came up with it just went in a brainstorm with my sense. with my um with my co-founder right and we were just we we're like what should we call it and we're like oh man like morning yeah like this, morning, morning we're breaking the day you know it's like daybreaker oh my god that's such a sick so name good. that's so good yeah that's beautiful that's thank good. you and the mischief aspect to it because yeah with love and mischief. mischief that's that definitely i remember that was um i came up with that as yeah. well um and what's the what's with the love idea mischief? behind mischief i, I love you know, the mischief so i aspect. want to start an agency called mischief Actually, uh, so it's about like being genius. a female, you know, mischief. Yes, yeah. Um, but mischief has always been, you know, everyone has always called my twin sister and I mischievous. Like when you're a twin, mm. you're always causing mischief. So we were always switching classes and yeah. like playing tricks on people, and like that was like literally my my middle name. All right. So mischief is, and I and I, you know, mischief is such a kind of a bad rap sometimes, but like it's also like living life with a wink. And so the idea was, you know, Daybreaker really is you're partying in the morning in a time where you're supposed to be sleeping. Like right. you're going to work on a weekday. It's right. it's a sober party. So it's it's mischievous um, in just the right ways, you know? Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And attention to detail because we were, t we were earlier discussing just popped in my mind because I literally, yeah. I saw who watches a video more than four minutes, but I came across just doing a little research, you know, before sitting down with you guys, I came across the proposal that Mr. Eli here did oh. uh, at Burning Man, 20 plus minutes, oh. and I was just like glued to it. Did you uh, watch the whole thing? I did, I did. The beautiful wow. speeches and the whole nine, and it was really, really uh. amazing. Cause and just how you orchestrated all that, so it just really came across a when how dedicated you get to when someone in your life and well done, well done. For those who don't know, you can check it out Thank online. Um, I mean, uh, when you have someone like this uh, and you're pr producing experiences for a living, yeah, um, wow, I can only yeah, imagine logistics you want to and the best possible ones, the, the ones prices, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. I mean, the craziest part was that Rada's twin sister surprised her in the middle of Burning Man, uh, who had just given birth three weeks ago three weeks wow. before that so. before that yeah so. it was um it was the most surprise i'd ever been and you know my sister and i were talking about details recently and like what is what is it about details that my sister and i get so crazy about and eli does too like why do we care so much about the details like why are we so in the weeds all the time and we decided and as we like unpacked it it's like the details is what inspires intimacy right so like 
the more the more thoughtful you are about the details like so with Eli like all the masks that he had at the engagement where everyone had a white mask and there was a word yeah. on each mask for an intention for our, our 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 marriage together so I got to go around the circle and each person one by one took the mask off to reveal a surprise friend had flown in from around the world to be there um it was wow. just like the 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 details matter the details inspire the intimacy if it was just whatever straight lines everywhere you know it just there's no intimacy there so it's the care um inside the details that inspire you to feel belonging and so that's what we realized like why why you feel connected to apple as a brand because it's so beautifully detailed why we love pixar as a as an animated studio because everything is like i mean they've hidden is easter eggs across all their films yes, you know like right. every all the best brands in the world care about details in, in my book you know just to give in detail like i had a hidden six digit code um in my book that for all when i first like launched the book if people found the code um in the book and they unlocked it on my on my belong book website they could unlock an experience in the real world with me and i, sh I showed up there and there was like you know 150 people who discovered the code 30 people who showed up to this event wow. and it was just like how the book translated from this like you know kind of external experience to now an intimate experience with the author right so it's just like right. stuff like that you know the, the devils in the detail well, i should say the angels in the details you know not the devil the angels in yeah. the details yeah. and um yeah and, and all the things that eli does you know he made me a, a lunch just to, just before you know as you were just walking in the door and it's like oh. the detail the love i mean he had literally put put the mustard on the like on the salmon in the checkered formation wow. and it just made me feel so much more love than just like spritzing it on it takes the same amount of time but intention. the level of love and intention that goes into it yeah. makes me feel like he cares about me and cares about the process you know and it's that's what I love about him so much, you know. It's like we mm -hmm. both really see the the importance and the details, you know. Yeah. Tremendous. Yeah. Wow. Wonderful. Um, if there's anything else you want to, well, yeah, I mean, on? just to just to just oh, to yeah, share. Oh yeah, something about think. Yes. We'll just live, it, live up. it up. Yeah. Well, I mean, just, to, just I just want to add to that. Just we talk about intimacy a little bit more. It's just like, you know, where do you feel most intimate when you're communicating with your friends digitally? Where do I it's feel on, in my body? No, or? no. Where do you, where where what platform is the most intimate with your friends? That oh, you use? oh man. I would say uh, Instagram, or if I Facetime them. But if, if it's okay. a social platform, I'm still using. Or just of, yeah, or just any communications platform. Oh, like yeah. Oh, iMessage, WhatsApp. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, text. WhatsApp, text. Yeah, so like text messages still have a ninety percent open rate, right? Yes. Emails have like a three percent oh, yeah, open totally. rate. Like, like, email. Yeah. So, but like, but like, your only your family, your friends, your community texts you. Everyone else will email you, yes. you know, they'll text you. Yeah, FaceTime, of course, is an even deeper. I love FaceTime. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite. Yeah. But really for You're like totally data, WhatsApp or message. Yeah, or yeah. Like iMessage, like message, like text messages. Sure. And so we were like looking at all the online learning and we're like, how can we deliver value in between our daybreaker events? Mm -hmm. We have to just 29 days in between our daybreaker events, right? Like how can how we to continue to deliver value? Yeah, con connection yeah. going and deepen. It's like why you started a podcast. You were like, look, I do this, I do this video series or I do these yeah. events, but like how can we go deeper while we do these sorts of conversations? Yes. So the same way, it's like how can we how can we stay connected to community members, but like deepen our service to them in a more meaningful mm. way? So we started developing this technology where every morning you wake up and you get a text message from a, one of the most brilliant kind of thought leaders around different topics that we're struggling with. Mm -hmm. So things like time management or nutrition essentials or fitness on the go or building your dream community, which I teach, yes. um, or unlocking your entrepreneurial mindset. We have the CEO of Whole Foods teaching that class. Like We have like all these incredible leaders who get to text you every morning for 21 days around topics that you struggle with as an adult mm. and it's like adulting yeah yeah, you know? yeah. And, it's, and it's called live it up and and um and we want to offer the most affordable online learning as well and in a format that people will actually complete the text messages you're actually sending you're pushing education to you instead of you having to remember to go online and log in somewhere to check your yes. daily lesson or whatever mm -hmm. this is this is pull education versus push education and and i really believe in this idea of like learning on the go learning while living um and okay. so yeah and so live it up we just launched a couple weeks ago and we congratulations we've had you know how can someone sign insane, up how can you find out oh yeah you go to go live it okay and it's like eight bucks a month oh my god easy breezy and yeah and you get to learn from guides that would normally cost thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars in yeah. the online course, but 
that's eight bucks a month and you can do 12 months and, and you're literally it's coming right to your phone it's, coming straight it's to your convenient. phone with a daily video video challenge it's challenge based three minute challenge the bite size you can do it while in line for coffee while in the bathroom yeah. while you know you're in bed just waking up or whatever and it's just a wonderful way to kick your day off you know with with energy and and, and intention mm. um so yeah i'm just really proud of and and just like Right now, we, we have my belong challenge happening. We have a, we have also community groups inside of it, and we have two hundred people in my current community challenge right now. And like when I tell you, people are like pouring their hearts out, like pages and pages of sharing about all my daily challenges, and it's just unbelievable the support that people are having for one another. How people are learning so much about themselves through their sharing of each other, the permission wow. that's being given. It like I I cry every day reading these messages because these 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 challenge responses that everyone is so wholeheartedly getting into, mm-hmm. um yeah and I just think that it's life changing. Wow, that's that's that's, yeah. that's tremendous. I mean, I just the first thing that comes to my mind is time management. You know, how yeah. does one even like I mean, take more pictures, you guys? Class, huh? Yeah, yeah take more pictures. Too many challenge. He's that's brilliant. A, it's yeah. incredible because like there's so many. You guys have so many projects going yeah. on, and yet you know there's. It's all controlled. There's so many there's so many systems and communities you're building, and yet it's chill. It's happening. Things are getting done, and yeah. you're looking for new ways to even grow. That's it. So yeah, on the way here, I was actually literally on the way here to this podcast to to, uh, to speak with you guys, and I just overheard two I'm dropping. I overheard two this woman passing by, and they're just like stressing out, like there's not enough hours in the day. Right. So, you know, like oh, I have like these three things to do, and like. And here I am coming, I'm sitting with you guys, I'm hearing about one, they, we just launched this company, we just sold this company, we're doing this, we're doing that, <laughs> and we're traveling here, and yet it's like, it's, and, and yet there's still more time to even grow more. Yeah. What, if, what are like two main two points? Um, community. It's, community, it's literally community team building, um, being super steadfast about boundaries, actually. So like, it's not saying yes to everything, it's actually cutting out the, the, the sort of like the negative players in your life. Mm. But being very, very strict about that. Like for me, I have such a rule around, you no longer grandfathered in just because I've known you for a long time. Wow, Like that's you have hard. to deliver. You have it's to a deliver. hard conversation. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's a conversation of just like, hey, listen, I'm, I'm choosing right now just a very small community. I have a, I have a daughter who's one. I have, a, I have a partner who demands attention. I have multiple businesses that I'm really pouring a lot of love into. And I'm, I don't have time, but meet me on the dance for Daybreaker. So it's like those friends who I love, but like I have to be ba- very, very focused around who I can spend my time with. Mm. Um, I invite the Daybreaker to dance with yeah. me. You know, so I have two hours you know, every two weeks to be with them and then maybe go to breakfast afterwards and really connect and catch up. Mm -hmm. Um, But, um, but just really, you know, paying attention to your energy levels and, um, and then finding the right people who don't have the same skill sets as you, but finding people who love to operate, who love to build teams, who love, um, who, who just want to, um, who are in the same sort of level of personal development, who are working on themselves every day. So that any type of like moment of, of friction, there's a level of self-awareness there that we can work through it. Mm-hmm. Cause like a lot of partners I've had in the past, I mean, I've, I've trust me, I've, I've been effed over so many times. I've had hostile takeovers. I've had, I've had, I've been sued. I've been, I mean, I've had like, every partner turn on me like from like i mean not every but like so many partners yeah. turn on me employees just like steal from it just like you name it it's happened yeah, yeah. so i i have a very discerning kind of energy feel now because i was so optim i mean i'm still so optimistic yeah, i'll never totally. lose that but like i have a discerning optimism around what what the partnership will look like just because someone just loves mayor's you know, like uh video series and all things that you're doing and super soul events just because they love it it's mean the right person for it right. to be a partner so, on it. So to be very discerning about someone who loves something, or do they have the requisite skills to to um, actually part of the to team actually and carry part, through? Yeah, exactly. And people mm. who are people of their word, a lot of people are like, yes, and then they'll fizzle out. Oh, totally. Like the number of people who have started with a F, yes, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, and then like two weeks later, like, hey, uh, where are you at? And it's like, oh my god, like I have something busy to do, and the next shiny object comes. Yes. It's like so. Yes, like I have you know five projects I'm working on right now, but they're all in the same ecosystem. They're all talking to each other. They're all around, yes, helping community. It's education. It's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's experience design. It's all of that. Um, And, um, yeah, and so it leaves time for our one, two, three, you know, which. One, two, three, four. 
Oh, it's one, two, three, four. One, so two, three, four. One, we two, have three, a, so we have in order for us to stay happy as a partnership, we have developed this one system. D- one date night, two sex times, three family nights, and four workouts a week. Wow. Yeah, one, two, three, four. A week. A week. A week. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. No rollovers. No rollovers allowed. Bonuses. So yeah. one date night a week. So date night is tomorrow night. Yeah. Uh, two sexy times. So we can have a date night sexy time in the same night. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay, got you it. You can bang out two. Sure, two and one. Okay, okay. All right. There's already there. Yeah. <laughs> I see what you did there. So you get a two and one. Um, or like family night, you know, um, can be with friends as well. So three family nights. So last night we had a family night with a friend. Um, and then Monday he, he cooked for me family night with Soleil, our baby. Tonight we have friends coming over again. So that'll be three family nights knocked out. We've worked out twice this week. So we have two more workouts to knock out for twice. And we have date night tomorrow night. So wow. like, boom, that's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, yeah. four. Wait, that's, that's genius. And it makes so much sense. Yeah. And, and four, four workouts a week you do in the morning. So it's like yeah. we do it from, you know, eight to nine, yeah. an hour workout. Day breakers, I'm sure the workout Yeah, day breakers, well. workout. Like, really workout. So back. I have yep. two this week so that I've, I'm done my week. quota yeah. for the week <laughs> for <laughs> workouts. Nice. So wow. I have that coming up. Cool. Yeah, um, so yeah, so we just have to get back to the two sexy nights and there we go, get, get it go. done. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> on that note, we are running out of time. Yeah. Yeah. Time's <laughs> of the essence. Time's <laughs> of the essence. I am so guys, thank you so much, Rada, Eli. Thank yeah. you so much for your time, for your wisdom, for your sharing, uh, and for all that you're showing up in this world as leaders thank and caregivers. Thank you so much Likewise, for showing up on the dance you. floor. You know, without that, we wouldn't have met you. And yeah. Yeah. thank you. Yeah, to have you the community member as a friend. Thank you. It means a lot to me, guys. Thank you very much. And all those who are listening and watching, see you on the dance floor.